the guys that built that, you know, oh, fantastic. Just looking up at them and you see the structure and the work that's in the type of thing, you know, from them days. It's a beautiful building. It's a beautiful, beautiful building when you look at it on the outside and, and you look at the old photographs of it. It, uh, it sort of epitomises the Victorian philanthropy that took place at that time. There's a, lot, there's a big affection for the Flory from generations of people, not just the local people, but people spread out all over Liverpool and all over the world. Transforming a building is a sign, really, of transforming a community. Ernest Hall invested greatly, you could tell his passion for this building by the investment, the tech, the building techniques, just the materials that were used. It's impacted on the lives of a lot of people. I think if you knocked it down and rebuilt it, then we would have lost something. You can see that somehow this building has meant a lot to a lot of people. It's in your blood, which basically it is. Uh, talk to lads now that I see who used to be in the team when I was 18 years of age, and they're all asking about the flurry. You know, they said it'd be great to have it back again. It's just nothing like it around, you know. Flurry, it was excellent because it had everything. The going in the flurry, the noise, you know, of everything, every world, the lads were doing different things. I think it's an iconic building. Um, and, and I don't think there are very many buildings like that in Liverpool, and especially when you know, the, the large percentage of the money was given by one family. And I think to have knocked it down would have been a, an insult to, um, to the Hall family. But you can still imagine the smells there. You can still hear the noises, different parts of the flooding. Up the main staircase, if you start to hear the boxing, the uh, punch bags going, dad's voice shouting, you know, shouting to the lads and you know, encouraging. We used to get top class Xboxes who used to come and you know, help you run a place to be in the MC and things like that. And it was very good. Well, I've had 283 fights. And I've hardly got a mark on me. I've boxed the Russians, the Germans. I've been the, I was in the last Empire Games. I got picked to go to the 1960 Olympics. I got picked to go to the 1956 Olympics. People are just absolutely stunned by this building. They either know it uh, and they come along, oh, I used to go to the Flurry. <laughs> they that happens all the, every time. It, it, oh, we used to go to the Flurry. Oh, my dad used to go, used to box for the Flurry, used to play football for the Flurry. And it comes across all the time, the, the love and the, the association um, that people have with the Flurry of the past. She was just such a beautiful building that you had to do something about it. Some, guy in the in the council he said 
the structure's as sound as it could be. He said, these Victorians knew what they were doing when they built. Look how thin the mortar is between the bricks. Look, and he, you know, so he sort of, sort of noticed things then, don't you? Uh, I've done a couple of clean-outs myself in the main hall upstairs about four years ago when the roof collapsed. We, had, we moved it was approximately 22 skips full of rubbish in buckets, basically, off the main hall floor, stop it collapsing. And it was just, I don't know, you could still hear the noises as you walked in, uh, the flurry, the way it used to be, you could still imagine things going on there, you know, but then you get upstairs to the main hall and look up and there's a big open space, roof's gone, burnt. When I, when I first saw it, my heart dropped. You know, it had trees growing out the roof and all the windows smashed in, and you know, uh, and I just wondered, who, you know, uh, how the, uh, people could look at this and say we can do something about that in, in the community. And again, on the staircases, the pigeon droppings had been working, except possibly the pigeon droppings had helped because they'd protected the wood underneath. But there's about um, how much? About six inches of droppings that they had to clear out. The good thing about it, we've never given up. You know, there's been some terrible knockbacks, and you think, oh gosh, it's never going to happen. You know, we'll never get the money together. And I think the person who really has got to be thanked for this is Denise, because she has really been the go-getter in this. Denise's knowledge and, and drive and dynamism is just quite remarkable. And I honestly, with, with all due respect to all the, the, all the other trustees, I don't think that it would ever have got off the ground if she hadn't been involved. You know, without, without Denise, you know, I don't think we'd have made her. She, she, she deserves the damehood, I think. <laughs> I don't know what it is. Sometimes it's intangible. You can't quite put your finger on what it is. It's something that came from something so sad that the loss of a daughter, a child, um, that became so magnificent to an area. We did um, sort of quite a lot of research when we, we first were appointed and, and part of the work we did was to undertake a conservation management plan which looks at the history of the building um, and then looks at its significance both in terms of architectural history but also in terms of social history. scars and wear and tear of a building that is, well, essentially over a hundred years old now. But a very, very likeable building, although very plain inside, still very welcoming and a, and a fab fabulous place to be in. Clearly it was in a really bad state and the first thing that we were asked to do was to, to work out how we would sort of make it safe and clear it out 
and, and get it to a point where really the final decisions could all be made about what to repair and how to repair it and everything. So everything has to be meticulously planned. We have to do risk assessments and method statements for every app. <laughs> God, I'll start that again in a sec. Well. You, well, just, it only need five minutes. At the moment, um, William Ainley's, of, we carry a lot of our own staff who are used to working on these sort of buildings. It has to be, although it's, we are currently, phase one is a demo, what we call a demolition project, it has to be demolished very carefully so we're saving a lot of materials, making sure that we look for any clues in doors or door frames, skirting boards, so everything is, isn't just ripped out and thrown in a skip. We're trying to record um, the interesting elements and the elements that we have to put back in phase two. So all those are collected and labelled and we store them ready. So we, if we need to copy anything, we've got replicas to copy off. No, I think, is it 100, is it 100 tonnes of scaffolding? It's some you know, extraordinary figure for the amount of scaffolding that's been used. And uh, then they put the, the big curtain around it. Whoever designed the scaffolding, it's a, it's a not a jigsaw. It's a. We're trying to work out. It's, we we settled on Meccano, Meccano set. Some of Meccano set gone wild. People that have gave weekends up, you know, blood, sweat, and tears. It hasn't been easy. It's, it's always with the hope that, that now we we, we will see the rewards for that time and effort. This is all the work tasks plotted out on one side with everything that we've got to do. Suddenly, you were coming back into here and thinking, do you know, this is going to work. This is going to be fantastic. When you start to see the roofs going on and you start to feel the shape of the spaces, I think that's what I'm trying to say. Because, you know, when there was no roof on it and it was all just damaged and opened up, you lost, to me, the feel for what it was like as a building. But the point at which, you know, the roof's on, the roof was on in the gym and the skylight was in and, and you know, the floor levels were starting to be down and, and you, could, you could walk round into proper rooms and you could feel the spaces. I think that was probably the best moment because then you're starting to think, do you know, this is quite something. This is, this is going to be a good job. What the plan was originally was to bring in the trusses and have this huge crane that would lift the trusses up um, and place them on, on the top of the building. But um, what they're looking at now is bringing the wood in and actually building the trusses within the quarry. The end result is seeing her being restored and, and imagining and visualising what she will be doing, you know, what the building will, 
will be like the vibe and the atmosphere and the culture and the activities and just imagining and visualizing all that activity all that busyness going on in the building what, what will happen is they'll take they move the the roof the panel of the roof across so then they'll have a a, a big crane in last night we were told they're actually going to make them on site in situ which is far far nicer and they actually bring the timber in and they cut it and make it on site those trusses which i think is that isn't done nowadays apparently the frustrations now are disappearing and people are seeing that there is now there's something substantial coming out you know rising out of the rising out of the flames so to speak rather like the phoenix on the front of the uh, annual report <laughs> I think it's great. Uh, it's be really beginning to look like the community centre it will be once, uh, once again. Yeah. And it's such a great thing that a lot of the uh, events that are happening there are what happened before. Eddie, the lad himself, with a fine looking body on him. <laughs> Gets Alan rather excited when he sees this one. That full scrap was seeking my outer racket. <laughs> <laughs> With our Twinny there. On Twinny, we don't. His name's Henry Sinclair, but you yeah. always get Twinny. Never go for that team at all. Some good lads there. How did it affect our lives? I think it affected us in the point of view that he became part of a team, not just a football team, but the Flory. Um, because he'd done a vast number of things, from football to cricket to athletics to model making, table tennis, weightlifting, boxing. So he became a team of the Flory, regardless of whether you were in one or the other. You were all the team. And it seemed to plant you on the, the correct path. What they do is they do a surface treatment on the old brick where the glaze has disappeared. And then they do a base coat and then several stippled um, coats of varnish on top till they get uh, an appearance. So it looks like it. But actually the brick's quite far, far back. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's so clever. You go into the gym. Yeah. Um, on one of the entrance stores, you'll see on one side it's before and one side it's after. It's quite stark. When, when you think about it, because the architects and the engineers have managed to design it, it's still now got a really good modern building research establishment energy rating, the same as, as, a, as, a, as a, you know, a, a, an average modern building would have, which is fantastic. And then you look at all these different spaces that have been revealed in a way and you know there's there's loads of character to them isn't there and loads of all that history and seeing all the old boys coming round and everything it does make it something that you know you could never capture that history without having the building for it to keep living in i guess the heritage resource center is a place where we have kept the heritage if you like of the flory so the history of the flory is in is in that room and also importantly at some point during the restoration period, the management asked people in the community to donate anything they have, uh, which was linked to the flory. And we have had literally hundreds of stuff which has been donated. Uh, and again, this is another thing that makes the flory part of the community, because people can come in and say, oh, that's my dad's medal uh, that you, you've got on display there. Um, so from that perspective, uh, it's integral to the community. I was going through one side of the, the basement and I thought I'd pick the correct torch up and I hadn't. It was the wrong one. And it started to fade. It was pitch black down there. 
So I was trying to get out and it fell over something. The next time I went down, I went to see what it was. There's this big projector, and it was about nearly a foot, three foot high. It was just left there. I don't know how it survived the fire and everything, but it was perfect. But the Heritage Centre will also be part of our educational work that we do in the Flory. We want schools, colleges and universities to do their researches in the Heritage Centre, pick up a, an item that's of interest to them and do some research on it and better educate everybody else. So I'm really calling on all the schools and colleges to come and visit, come and have a look at what's in there and see what they can do, what we can learn from what, what we've got in the Heritage Centre. The Heritage Centre as well will, will carry temporary exhibitions. So I don't want people to say, well, I've been once, I don't need to go again. If you've been once, if you come back within a month, it will be different to what you saw the first time. So people need to keep coming in and using the place. And guess what? It's free. We've not just restored a building. We've restored, hopefully, a sense of pride and also um, opportunities secured for the future for the area. So I'm hoping the Bernards would be proud. <laughs> Everybody here sort of is, was totally committed to the project. It wasn't a difficult sell because I knew that everybody here on the ground was actually doing everything that they said they were going to do. It was a truly community-led project. There's a quote from a very famous novel called The Power and the Glory, which I, which I always use. It says, there's always a moment in childhood when the door opens and lets the future in. Well, that door's the flurry, and it's letting in a future that means that the children and young people who do all sorts of different activities here will find their own gifts and talents and will flourish into the future. Seeing the drawings that have been done, and the plans, and what we've got lined up for the Flory, um, besides the community spirit that I think will be there, um, it's going to be unbelievable. Long after we're gone, the Flory's still going to be there. We know she's in good hands um, and she's being looked after by the contractor until they pass it back to us and we've now got to concentrate on being ready for when we get her handed back. <laughs>